This is Dr. Jay Patel here speaking on diaphragmatic rupture, which is one of the 22 don't miss diagnoses in medical student radiology education. So some of the things that I wanted to talk about during this lecture are for you to be able to recognize the etiology of diaphragmatic rupture, some of the prognostic implications of this diagnosis, and some of the key facts that are associated with this diagnosis. So first let's start with an actual description of what a diaphragmatic rupture is. It's basically a traumatic laceration or tear of the diaphragm that's usually associated with herniation of the viscera into the chest. And that's basically the finding that we're, we're looking for on all the imaging modalities. If you see the abdominal viscera herniating into the chest in a traumatic setting, you pretty much have a diaphragmatic rupture, or at least you have to sus suspect it. Um, so most commonly, these injuries are caused by penetrating trauma more often than blunt injury. However, if you do have it in a blunt injury, it's going to be a severe injury and it's going to be a large defect. When you have it with a penetrating injury, it's typically due to a stab wound or a missile or a projection or a bullet or whatever you have at Grady that may cause a uh, penetrating injury to the diaphragm. And these are typically smaller defects. Left-sided diaphragmatic injuries are much more common than right-sided. Typically, about 95% of diaphragmatic ruptures occur on the left side. And it's really important to make this diagnosis because if you don't, there's a possibility that the diaphragmatic defect that occurs in this, in, in this injury will lead to abdominal visceral ischemia. The, the bowel will basically twist on itself and necrose, and that is not something you want to happen to your patients. So you, you can diagnose it immediately, but sometimes it's delayed months, potentially even years. And it's seen in about 0.8 to 5% of patients who undergo laparotomy or thoracotomy for trauma. So it's rare, but it's a very important diagnosis. So here is a coronal image of a human body that is cut right through the middle, and hopefully you can see this mouse, but here we are seeing the diaphragm over the right side. Underneath it is the liver. This is the liver parenchyma, right side of the liver, left side of the liver, and this is part of the left hemidiaphragm. Now this is a beautiful example of the anatomy and what we're basically looking for on the CT scans and x-rays is any defect or elevation up here. You see a soft tissue opacity or a mass or, or air filled loops of bowel projecting above this diaphragm into the thorax. That's on the right side and anything going up here into the left side that's bowel or that's supposed to be underneath the diaphragm will basically diagnose a diaphragmatic injury. Other things you can look for are shift of the heart to the other side because of the mass effect of stuff coming up into the chest this way. So here we have a frontal radiograph of the chest in a patient who is in a trauma. And we see this large lucency here and a little bit of a fold here. And basically what we're seeing is stomach herniating up into the chest cavity. This would be the left chest cavity that we would expect and we would expect the diaphragm to be somewhere in this region. We never really see a diaphragm and we see the stomach herniating up into the chest cavity. This is pretty much diagnostic of a diaphragmatic hernia. Um, the other things that point to this diagnosis are we know that bowel has come up into the chest because it's conforming to loops of what would be small bowel, large bowel, potentially stomach, uh, all overlapping this region and it's pushing the cardiac silhouette to the right side, into the right hemithorax. This NG tube here is also displaced to the right because of the mass effect caused by this herniation, um, this defect in the diaphragm that has allowed viscera to come up into the chest. The important thing to recognize about this is to definitely suspect or even tell the clinicians, the surgeons who may be treating this, that we strongly suspect a diaphragmatic injury in this case. And they may just take the patient straight to the operating right there or they may want to get a CT scan with contrast to try to actually delineate the diaphragmatic defect and give a, some kind of idea as to the surgical planning. Here are two coronal contrast enhanced CT scans through the, the chest and abdomen. Um, these are just select slices through right through the middle of the patient's body. This is the aorta here. This is part of the descending aorta. This is the liver. This is the right kidney. This is the diaphragm. And obviously, you don't see a nice left diaphragm going all the way across. See this soft tissue, this kind of white, opaque looking soft tissue density that's a little bit lighter than the fat that's dark of the, the peritoneal fat. This should be a nice line going all the way straight, protecting 
anything beneath it from going up into the chest cavity. In this case, there's fat herniating up into here. There's bowel loop herniating into the right ch or left chest cavity on this side. And here you can see it again. You, you see bowel here and bowel here. Now, this is the left chest cavity, and bowel should not be coming through a defect in a line that should be representing the diaphragm. So this should be going all the way across, and no fat and bowel should be going above this line up here. So we, this is diagnostic of a diaphragmatic hernia. Here is another patient. I just want you to notice this diaphragm right here. We have an axial CT without IV contrast. This aorta is not really well opacified, but there is oral contrast. You see oral contrast within the stomach. So this is the right diaphragm here posteriorly. This is the liver, and this is the left hemidiaphragm. And notice that the left hemidiaphragm posteriorly is not all the way up against the chest wall. It's not hugging these ribs posteriorly. There's a little bit of space. That's the lung right here. So this diaphragm is doing its job. It's protecting whatever's beneath the diaphragm from going up into the chest cavity. Now, contrast this with this example. Now, we have the stomach right here layering all the way posteriorly. It's, it's layering dependently against the chest wall, right next to the posterior rib here. So this is a case of a diaphragmatic hernia on an axial contrast in NCT. See how the aorta is full of contrast in this actual slice, and the stomach is sitting against the chest wall. This is called the dependent viscera sign, which is a sign that's pretty much diagnostic of a diaphragmatic injury. Here we have an upper GI series with follow through into the small bowel. So this is normal looking small bowel here. You see the duodenum, the first portion, second portion, third portion, fourth portion. And here you see the stomach, but wait a second. So this is the right hemidiaphragm. You'd expect the left hemidiaphragm to be right around this region, but you have stomach herniating above where you expect the left hemidiaphragm to be. So stomach herniating into the left chest you know, cavity, that's diagnostic of a diaphragmatic hernia or injury especially in the setting of trauma. Here we have a sagittal CT with contrast on this side. This is the aorta, the arch of the aorta, and we have part of the heart is seen here, and typically the diaphragm, you should see a nice line here. Right here we actually see part of the diaphragm and part of it here, but something's going on. There's fat above this line that represents the diaphragm. That's peritoneal fat, and this is bowel in the posterior left chest cavity. Now on this image we see another sign that's diagnostic of a diaphragmatic hernia or diaphragmatic injury. We have diaphragm here, diaphragm here on this sagittal cut, and then we have a hole. And in this hole there is bowel coming into the left chest cavity. This is called the collar sign, which is going to be depicted on the next slide. So on a frontal cartoon we see the heart, nice little image of the heart, trachea, bronchi, lungs, liver, stomach, and this is the diaphragm, this brown line here. Now notice, just like on the picture before, there's a defect in the diaphragm here, and a small part of the stomach is herniating into the left chest cavity. So this is diagnostic of a diaphragmatic hernia exhibiting the collar sign, because this right here, you can imagine, is the collar. Just like on this image before, here's a collar, bowel herniating through into the left chest cavity. Here is a frontal radiograph of the chest and the trauma patient. I had at Grady. This patient got hit on the right side by a vehicle and all we saw on the frontal chest x-ray was this soft tissue mass and you have bowel loop in the right chest cavity medially. So you shouldn't see bowel or air lucencies coming up into the chest in the setting of trauma. I mean this could be a pulmonary laceration, it could be an abscess if you do had that history in a patient who was immunocompromised for whatever reason, but in the setting of trauma, soft tissue mass with some air lucencies, you don't see the diaphragmatic contour well. Here on the left side we see it pretty well, but on the right side we don't see it well at all. So you got to at least suspect that there could be a diaphragmatic injury in this case, and you will alert the surgeon who may fix this as to this diagnosis, and you will also potentially recommend uh, CT scan with contrast at the patient's stable to see if you can outline the defect in the diaphragm. So, 
on this coronal CT with contrast. You know it's with contrast because you see this material that's dense in the uh, arterial tree and um, also in the aorta here. And now this is the liver, right? And the liver is sitting right next to the heart in this picture. This is the stomach and the left hemidiaphragm, and this is the heart. The liver is never sitting right next to the heart this high unless you have a few things going on. In the setting of trauma, that's a diaphragmatic rupture or hernia until proven otherwise in a traumatic situation. Uh, other things that could cause this, in the, if it wasn't in the setting of trauma, could be a phrenic nerve injury, potentially due to a tumor in the neck, um, something compressing on the phrenic nerve, or an avulsion injury of the phrenic nerve that's causing the diaphragm to be paradoxically elevated. But just remember this picture, and just remember that you should never see the liver sitting right next to the heart. Okay, now here is an axial CT cut through the patient's midsection um, right through this level, right through this level here. And it's very hard to recognize that when you're going through the axial CT scan that this liver is way too high up into the right chest cavity. You see the diaphragm here looking sort of floppy, sort of irregular. Okay, so this, this diaphragm is definitely ruptured and it's sitting right next to the heart. But when you're going through the axial CT, you may not... You're not used to seeing this all the time. It's much easier to see this on a coronal CT. It's clearly evident that the liver is sitting next to the heart, and that's diagnostic of a diaphragmatic rupture secondary to trauma. So some of the chest x-ray findings that you should definitely be familiar with that we've already gone over, um, what's going to cinch the diagnosis is that the abdominal viscera is above the diaphragm. You're looking for air loosencies, small bowel, large bowel, stomach, above the diaphragm or the expected region of the diaphragm. Other things that you could see are hemothoraces, pneumothoraces, uh, loss of the actual contour of the diaphragm, other signs like the dependent viscera sign or the collar sign which are on CT. You could have airspace disease in the lower lungs because it's being basically compressed by the herniated bowel contents. Um, you could see upward extension of an NG tube. I didn't show a picture of this, but if you saw an NG tube going down the esophagus, going distal to the gastroesophageal junction, and then coursing back up over the expected region of the diaphragm, you know there's some kind of hernia. Um, and if the patient didn't already have one already, if they didn't have a congenital hernia, then it's traumatic until proven otherwise in the setting of trauma. Um, and we also talked about shift in the mediastinum to the opposite side. CT findings that you should be looking for in the setting of diaphragmatic rupture are the collar sign, which we went over, so try to remember that. The stomach or bowel or liver is herniated above the diaphragm and it's pinched off at the neck just like a collar. Uh, the dependent viscera sign in where bowel contents are layering posteriorly against the ribs near the lung bases. You should never see that and if you do, you got to at least suspect a diaphragmatic injury. Um, like we said before, stomach or bowel above the diaphragm, that's like 100% diagnostic. And the best thing for you to use when you order these CT scans and to look at the images, you want to look at the coronal and sagittal reformations, and that's going to show the discontinuity of the diaphragm the best. So imaging recommendations, once you see this injury or suspect this injury on a chest x-ray from the findings we've already talked about, you got to ask them, do you want to get a chest abdomen CT with oral and IV contrast, assuming their kidney function allows it? Because um, this will help actually diagnose it in a stable patient. And you want to really look and analyze those coronal and sagittal reformations for injury to the diaphragm. Um, dependent viscera sign, collar sign, bowel above the normal diaphragm. Prognosis, um, early diagnosis and repair, these patients will do well, but usually these injuries are overlooked. A lot of these injuries are overlooked because you're not thinking about it. Patients have some minor trauma or blunt trauma or penetrating trauma. You got to really interrogate the diaphragm really well and you got to at least tell the surgeons that this could be a possibility because it needs to be explored. Because if it's not diagnosed or if they don't figure it out, the patient can come back five years later and potentially necrose their bowel because it'll twist through the defect and that, that is not something you want to have to happen to the patient because they could die from that. So pretty much that is a whirlwind tour of diaphragmatic rupture, a serious diagnosis to make, uh, something with lots of prognostic implications, and something radiology can definitely help our surgical colleagues figure out and repair. Thank you very much.